Persistent crickets, aren't we? Just a nation of persistent crickets. I haven't quite figured it all out. I've been hoping against hope that it all changes. There's an awareness coming. That's that's for sure. People are finally starting to see it. And last week, right after the broadcast, I couldn't get to everything like I normally do. I don't know if you know if you've been keeping track. I probably have 200 or 250 tabs of news things noticed to you that I don't get to. Just can't get to it in a broadcast. So lots I won't do. But right after the broadcast, there was a story I couldn't get to, and it was kind of out of context with what I was where I was going with last week that uh, people sent me information on and that I want to pick up on this week and uh, move forward with uh, just showing you it's not this stuff is out there it's in your face and I also want to point out you know it's not just about knowing the notice and the knowledge it's about okay now you just, that you know what are you going to do with it and so before I go too much farther forget this is BTWRLM343 for those of you on aftercast pastcast postcast whatever you're going to wherever you find this place wherever it's uh, it ex it's, it's finally exists and resides in the future hopefully Maybe it'll be irrelevant at some point. That would be nice to find, have found out later, maybe. And thank you to all y'all that are syndicating, live streaming this out while we're going out, and then all of you that will post the broadcast later, and, and Grammy Mary for the speaker and lets us uh, kind of go through there. It puts everything out to everybody as well, to YouTube, though I don't do much on that YouTube. I don't, again, I just I say that, and I just don't know what we're going to do here with everyone wanting to go to those places that are really just the controlling uh, the controlling grid. And a lot of people in this broadcast or others would find that out eventually if you didn't know it. And yet that's the only avenue that we have, and in a way it's okay. It's the place where we need to be, except you can't funnel everybody through your click. So not getting people to click is important, uh, that they don't listen to the – that they don't – aren't able to hear these, uh, these these pieces of information, and it all helps to continue the noise. And that's been a disappointment to me, but at any rate, a lot of people are seeing it. I was encouraged last week, lots of people saying, hey, I missed a story, and I just couldn't get to it. And so let's move into that, because here's what I want to point out. And again, some of this, I don't, I mean, almost all of it, I'm not too critical of, I may say stuff that sounds critical or if you will, judgmental, but it's not really to do that. It's to point out we need to do better. And what we're doing is, uh, you know, we're trumpets on the on the wall looking at an enemy coming or in our gates, and that, I'm concerned that it ends there, and it does usually end there. And we see the problem, but we don't move forward with it. And we don't, and then we focus on the wrong things. Not that they're so wrong, but they're not, they're not going to be, you're not going to go, once you see something and it's not relevant to where you have to go, then it, and you focus on it, you, bec you become irrelevant. You, you are the things you possess in a way, that way. And uh, this story came through, and this is on the ongoing uh, exposure behind Woodshed. And I'll just, uh, it, it relates again what I've been telling you, all, all on and on and on. And it's interesting to me what people pick up on and what they make an issue of and what they don't. And what they end up doing with this information, it's an alarm bell. And so in this case, I'm going to get to a video here that was also uh, what I actually lear first learned of the, pro of the story. Uh, I want to go to a petition and this and that. And so petitions, I guess, are okay. Maybe they, they cause people to rally up. But because I understand that there's a real functioning parasitic amoeba in, a, in, your, in your nations everywhere, that the rule of law is also, interestingly... Coincidentally, and I do believe in coincidences. I just want to make a dis discern whether or not it, the coincidence means something. I'm not, I'm not any. You'll never hear me say there is no coincidence. That's not a coincidence. Absolutely, they're all coincidences if you can put them in place, time, or or location or condition. They're coincidences. The point is, do they matter? And so we focus on we can, we can do this thing. Will call for these people will call for a petition. I don't want to denounce that, but. I already know that there's a system in the video that I'll be talking to you about here about the UN in Salt Lake City. Or I, I guess it was Salt Lake City. The focus is really a, a little bit of a miss, even though in the video that, they, that I learned from it is what caught my attention. They have the answer. And no one's focusing on the ramifications of the answer, which I tell you is a metastasized cancer in this country. Let me read uh, here, get to the story, the, the report here. Everyone was up in arms, and I guess in some regard I would be a little bit up in arms, but I wouldn't, as I always tell you, I, I kind of look at these things, how would I approach this? And being surprised by this, I suppose I wouldn't have had much more to say than the, peop than the, than the one that was filming in the video when we get to it, uh, which I won't get to that section. I'm going to get to a conversation that the 
compiler of the video gets to, because he gets to a point when I want to focus you all on, it's not about the petition eventually. It's about you understanding the cancer is in this country. It's why we hear these stories. And it's something I've been trying to trumpet, if you will, uh, all these years to have you focus on in part, I mean, it's not the only thing, but it's the major part that brings in all the servitudes that you understand that you hear is mostly the news, actually. And it's interesting how we don't necessarily appreciate what the UN and its adherents and its religious advocates would be promoting, that it doesn't look like it's all together, but it, in fact, it, I don't know how it's not together. That I throw a military consequence on top isn't actually that different when you find out that it's a global consequence. And and so it's almost hard to differ, differentiate it from being a tool in a bigger context either as well. And I'm not saying that in any absolutes. As I, again, I only have a limited view behind a woodshed, so I don't really know. I can only deduce from things I see and do and how that things that I see and do respond if they respond and in what, and for what, in what context. The UN claims Salt Palace uh, in SLC international territory during Agenda 2030 conference. Now, again, we've talked about 2030. I read it to you. I told you this is the plan till, till 2030, and they got another one to 2050, and another one out to 75 and 2100, and on and on and on. These people are, have a plan, folks, and that's our. I said before, before in the past broadcast, that's your problem. Whether you want to recognize that or not, I don't know what more to say. It's your problem. You will watch your your um, your United States of America as the laws I see work uh, being de destroyed, and we've also heard uh, to get these uh, this people this group of people out of the way. We've also seen in their documents the bar association's membership will promote this whole and entire thing, and you'll see wherever the rule of law works is where the controls constraints are against y your property and rights, and it's, it makes it even more important that you understand what I'm saying about. Finding the alternative, uh, the it's actually the law or the equity in the violation instead of trying to be, come and argue with these people. Our lawsuit in 2013 is all about this stuff, and we'll get to that in a moment. But you also, if you look at that lawsuit, you realize we didn't sue the ultimate uh, conveyor of this promoter of this information, but it's named in this video, which really didn't take any more notice. I, I was expecting to see a little more notice from it. That the UN claims an international territory in a place in Salt Lake City. Now, I, I guess people can make uh, persons. Uh, this, in, this this organization can make claims. That wasn't even really a, a big deal for me uh, in some regard. Anybody can make a claim. I mean, really, what are they doing? In this case, there was a, in the, with a video. There was a reporter that went in. I guess it was, a, and that's the other thing. Was it a general invitation to everybody to show up and be? introduced to the 2030 agenda. If so, then there was a public invitation, if I can say public, meaning all the people and whatever, all the companies and their and their agents, and in particular the media, because they want to get the word out of here. It doesn't matter really what they're claiming. Is what are they? Is there a violation? And in this case, you're going to see a police, so-called police officer of this compound that they claim, uh, trying to take a reporter, if I can put the notice on that, uh, take note of that, uh, take her, take her, and send her out of the of the facility, which they claim to be a compound. Somehow, all that didn't really matter to me, but until we got to the point of somebody being discriminated against in one of the fundamental rights in the United States, it's at least printed and recognized in the First Amendment. Now, the response that I saw on the video is a. We'll get to. A, well, we're not going to get to the response. It's just too much to go through. But you can. Go, you'll get the video in the link. Was not. It wasn't my first response. As I normally go through some of this, my I respond again. Remember, Kansas versus Colorado in 1907. The Supreme Court stated international law is always on board. It's always recognized. It's always on top. It's always imposed. And so, if you'd missed that little thing I've been telling you years ago, I would just to comment on that case a while. You're missing the part of the whole thing about how vast your your knowledge has to be to understand how these people are coming. And there's a, you don't have to become experts in all this or knowledgeable to a deep degree. You just have to have the basics. And then again, any more basics that you have, the more basics that you have and the more into the, the knowledge that you have, the, the better you're going to be prepared to keep up with these people as they move the ball around. And I've told you this is a fluid inter interaction that you have to do. 
And I'm not going to go through a detailed analysis. I just want to go through a couple things to point uh, out to you that we have to walk into these places if we're going to be doing protecting ourselves. You're, you're there for a reason. You know this is a problem. That's why you're there. But you've got to pre be prepared for these things. And now, uh, being confronted by this UN police officer in a compound shouldn't have been a surprise. You see it all the time on on the auditors. Uh, some of these, some of this stuff should have uh, should be in your mind. You're going to be, have to be prepared. So you have to be ready to go with it. And uh, the, the the assertion by the by the UN compound police uh, was that this was essentially she was gonna, this this reporter was going to be thrown out. That said, okay, that's that's a harm under the First Amendment. The claim was that it was somehow at least implied. And we don't know, and this is the point where I say become the investigative reporter. You're there to be an investigative reporter. Here's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity. You have to have a little bit of knowledge of international law. She was claiming she was immune from having pictures taken, this police officer, which in an accent that was so thick, I had to question whether or not she's actually um, in the country correctly. And I don't know that she's not. I have to assume that she's okay. But one of my first questions would have been not about her, really, would have been the claim that this property was somehow sacred and international. And here, what am I talking about? I'm talking about nothing more than I always talk about in law, in land law, the law of the land. To do that, they have to have a document that cedes that property to them. And what I could tell, and this is, I don't even know more than what I saw in the story here or the video. There was money that the government already paid to have this thing happen. So your legislators are already in on it. And number one clue. Uh, number two, this thing somehow was set up in a ostensibly it was lawful so there's you can test the claims now and it's possible you can work backwards now to find out not just on a petition what's your line items of violation that the government ultimately gave money to these people if they turn out to be the felons it sounds like in the initiation I don't know that it is I'm going to be researching the felony that goes on this person who purports to be the police underneath a declaration of a territory ceded outside the laws of the United States of America, to be able to deny and discriminate against uh, the press, seemed to be my cause that I said, when you have a right or property that's violated under color of authority without warrant, you should find this in your state. You should have this in your mind, how this works. If you can't keep it in your mind, write it down on a piece of paper. It's a couple lines. You have extortion and you have coercion and likely conversion, depending on how your state, local state, takes care of this. I didn't go back to the state, uh, to Utah and figure this out. I'm just telling you, this is just how this stuff works across the nation. Everybody's in on an equal footing. It's pretty standard. How you get there may be a little different, but it's all going to be pretty standard that when they denied a, that what is clearly, at least by my interpretation and anybody's reasonable interpretation to be a violation of a constitutional protection, somebody claiming to be a foreigner in your nation, claiming ceded territory, I think I'd want to know about the evidence of that, wouldn't you? So I'm an investigative reporter. You're now violating my rights under the color of a ceded territory. You're committing a felony in this state if you can't produce the prep paperwork to seed that ceded this territory to you that keeps me out of it. An invitation to the general public. But be that my it was my first thought as soon as the, the, this woman said this is a compound and and you can't be here because this is a UN place. But my initial thought is that has to be a ceded property. And did the state, and then my mind, the way my mind works is, okay, this is just land law all of a sudden. Did the state legislature have the right to cede this property to them underneath a grant, no less, of the public treasury? And isn't that tre public treasury being paid now out to do something that may have been illegal and foster and encourage felony? And so I'm, I'm, my mind's already working on this. Is, everyone says it's a violation, and they know it's a violation. Maybe their claims initially sure sound like it. But you have to know enough to go in and say, okay, we have a problem with this, the territory that they're claiming. Did it give them this kind of immunity? Number one. Number two, let's just get to a, the officer. Is she claiming diplomatic immunity? If she's just a police officer, my knowledge of, of this doesn't give her, my knowledge of international law and diplomatic immunity doesn't give her that. I have another set of questions coming. And so I just, when I look at this stuff, my mind is just clean, thinking completely different than what I hear people coming back with. I know it's a shock, and I know you get lost in the viol what the, is apparent violation. The point is you, you can't take your belief of an apparent violation. It's an apparent violation. You have to develop the probable cause. It has to be based on the objective basis, the black and white that everyone doesn't want to really get locked into. 
that is their power in these kind of situations. And so I'm not, I can't, I don't want to go bit by bit on this. I just want to point out when you when finally get to this video and you see it and you get, and you start looking, look and see when they, when someone makes a claim of an authority and it's starting to affect a, a right you believe you have protected, you don't have the right maybe to claim, you have the right to inquire, to break, gain the probable cause of what I've just claimed to you as if it's color authority taking a right or a property is a felony. If they don't have that diplomatic immunity, now personum jurisdiction comes in as well. Uh, in the state, not 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 anywhere else, not their ceded territory. Now you've got them for maybe even impersonating an officer and to uh, take away your rights under color of law. That's a felony. And so what you're developing is the ability in real time, and you might have to take notes, and a camera's a good thing, is you start asking the better questions to qualify the assertion by a police officer even if they want to claim that it's a territory, a ceded territory. If they are wrong in any one of those, you now have the, the probable cause to believe that there's a there's felony crimes going on, which does what? Now it sets you up. Instead of being the convict as you walk out and wanting to be a trespass, you're walking out but with all this knowledge because you're, you're not going to fight them, with the knowledge that they are using the color of authority to deny rights, uh, violating you, you without the po actual authority and power to do so. And that becomes your criminal complaint to the cops against that woman who didn't sound like she was from here. And then you get to inquire there later. I wouldn't do that first. I'm just saying there's, there becomes a problem. Everybody becomes under the hook until you find out who has the diplomatic immunity underneath the ceded territory. That's fostering and encouraging denial of the press and the very promotion that they're actually advertising to do. And so you can tell and make a report whether they listen to it or not to anybody that's called to come and arrest you, and then you what to do. Now you go back and say, listen, now you make it federal. Now you tie it in. Now I have to tell you this. You, you, might, you can do whatever you want, officer, but I've got a criminal. I have a probable cause to believe a felony crimes are going on and then qualify whether or not they're going to act on it. If they think it's a civil case, then, then you move into the federal uh, issue, 18 U.S.C. Uh, 3 and 4 and 3. It goes backwards. And they become, by the cops, become... They are given notice that they could come to liability underneath being a misprison of felony for not telling, not making a report or not telling the prosecutor that this is going on in the state. So I guess what I'm saying, and this is a loaded gun to you all, so you got to be, uh, you have to be more knowledgeable than I tell you behind the woodshed. But this, I wanted to point out, there's a different way to approach the violation to us. And it's an empower, a more empowering and puts you on a different footing than being a trespasser by their claim. You get to now put up a, a felony they're committing until they show the proof of their ceded territory, their right to deny, the, 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 the not follow the laws of the United States, of a UN, which is not a body, it's only a, an international body, it's not a government. I don't know if it's even, I guess you can, I don't know if it's considered its own non-governmental organization, I don't remember now, it might be. Uh, but it's it would just be taking the property based in what? Like a rent, wouldn't it? A lease? Maybe some private, uh, governmental, private partnership that they've developed? And you'll hear the partnership that's developed in here, which then gets you back in. Once you see it the way I'm suggesting to you and you start developing these things, you're developing the lineage of violation that are happening within the government to allow this type of nonsense. Let me, I've just said a whole lot, just kind of touch you on the, on the title, UN Takes Over Utah Tax Funded Venue claims it's international terror shuts down journalists. Okay, it might be able to shut down the journalist. It certainly would have done it the way that she did it, uh, but not necessarily shut it down if you did it the way I'm saying you need to walk into these things. Uh, again, the international law is playing all the time, and if you miss that, as I keep telling you about this stuff, you're missing a bigger, a bigger issue that you can bring to bear, especially against the UN. In the first United Nations conference outside of New York City, in the United States of America, uh, the UN took over Salt Lake Salt Palace in the Salt Lake City, Utah, and claimed it was international territory. In the process, uh, the, the, they were shutting down a journalist's rights up to video. And that's, again, I didn't, it didn't matter to me what they call their place and how they're doing it. It was that it looked like there was a, a fundamental protectable rights being violated under color of authority. And, okay, so we can go on and on and on and on with how deep this, thing, this problem goes. In what? Qualifying the claims of someone who uh, wants to take a, a privilege that doesn't exist. And in, 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 your, in my mind, it doesn't exist that way. Now, they have their own private rights to the property. 
people who researched this came up with all the documents about all the money that was uh, given by the legislate looters and the, and the mayor to ex to ex to promote this. This is all treason ultimately, but you just can't call it that. You got to build the steps of the evidence that allows it. And then in the and when you get in confronted down the in the bottom, that's not the evidence of that. It's what the evidence of the method that they keep you from being able to report it, or it's a method to deny your ability to investigate the crime. You take what they're saying, you turn it into the crime. You don't turn it, you don't make it up. You find the laws and the words, the elements of which qualify so that you can go ahead and assert. But as soon as they said that was a compound and the, and, the, and the deprivation of the rights after a public invitation, I'd have been all over the seeding of that territory to be a compound that was not under the laws of the United States. See, we all believe it's not. I don't think it was, so you, but you just got to get it out of them. And then once you put that police officer on notice, it's not an argument. So now you're working on felonies in this state. Unless you produce the seeding of the territory to this, to your organization, and then you have license to do what you're doing against my rights, you're committing felonies in the state. I need your name. Now, I got your picture, and I get to continue to get my pictures. And what I'm saying now is, I am witness to felony crimes, and I am. This is camera is no longer just the press. It is a, a the record I'm being made. Don't tamper with a witness in this country. I don't care who you are. See, it's up on your determination now. So I, I, we move this whole thing into a pre, even more protectable place. And I don't say this lightly to say, oh, this is your answer, and this is the. You say this in the wrong way, they'll beat you down and they'll throw you in jail, and then they'll you'll you'll be crying because you got nothing else to say because you did it wrong. This is the fine edge of being free or not. This is the fine edge of being able to keep the republic, if I can say it that way. You don't mess around in this. You have the knowledge and you apply it. You don't mess around just to see if you can get an advantage. I don't know how many people think that you can do that, and they get caught every time. It really drives me nuts. So. Utah State Legislature provided $650,000 for the conference. I guess there's a study to do about that was for the conference. We're looking at the property, though. We're looking at the entry on the building and the claim that they can deny fundamental rights through the color of authority by someone that sounds like she's a foreigner. She might be in here legally. She might not. Now we got a State Department question, don't we? And so when I talk about being able to take these things, make popcorn out of the kernel, this is the kind of stuff I'm trying to tell you. Yes, there's a violation, but how do you get at it? Do you just complain, just write a comp petition, or do you set up the record as you're going, in the real time, the things you need to know you have to set up? Instead of saying anything else, you set up this stuff, and you have a plan into the future on how you're going to execute, and one part of the plan is a stepping stone to the next, to the next, and it's just like a snowball collecting up all those dentists in the forest as it coming down the hill, uh, picking up everybody that did it wrong methodically with records. That's why more of you need to get involved because this is a, becomes a really big snowball quick and everybody could be doing their part to expose what was done, how it was done, and then tie it to a, the aiding and abetting of a, of a violation. Okay, so they bring up in here very important stuff and I don't usually touch the, UN, uh, the Agenda 21 stuff. You know I talk about it. You know I've read Agenda 2030. You know I've read it. So, but I don't usually describe too much. You know, I'll mention maybe Article 7 of Agenda 21 uh, talks about property, and that means you won't have any, and that's what they're after. They're after your property. You'll find out that most bar association discussions that can get away with it will, will not allow property to have any compensation. That includes you, yourself. So this is all undermining all of uh, these people, undermine at every point unless you learn how to stop it better. I don't know the ultimate, but I can know the way I look at stuff seems to be a lot quicker and better how we get intercept it, and how we can respond to it. So we already recognize the state legislators are allowing the United Nations to have a conference. That's the limit I have of this story. I don't know about the, the land. Did they have the right to cede the land? I don't think so. I don't. I just don't think so. I mean, I'm trying to go through my mind all these little things that go through the Constitution, the powers and all this stuff to do that. No, I, I don't think they, they do. So I've got a probable cause to believe it just can't happen, and that's what they're claiming. That's a color of authority to deny me my property rights. I'm back to that felony under state law. And we also have the extension over there to those civil rights, which we can do under the Title 42. That's sitting there to you all that you know about. What, Section 241, 242? This wasn't on the highway, but it's denying rights, right? So under, under the federal 
protection to the public protection, not the private, then you have this potential as well because they took a claim, a public claim. Not, not see, that's what I said. You got to be careful. They have a, they could have a legitimate private claim to be. They're just an organization that could be leasing land, renting land, or whatever. They got the favor of the legislator. What are you? You're just jealous? I guess you could too. But see, you're not going to if you come and like we do, try to advance production. They don't want to advance. They won't make give money for production to advance production. They won't give money to the university system to get us back to get the the university studying what makes watersheds work better. Um, help miners with their assays for uh, understanding the minerals, uh, give, uh, the, give the information and tests available to people that are in production to make their production more efficient. They, they stop doing all that. They don't give money for that. So this is the wrong end of history as far as that goes. Why? Because we've allowed it. And we've allowed it by walking in and getting confronted by someone that says, I'm a police officer on a UN compound. This is international territory. And we sit there, uh, 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 instead of addressing the claim. Qualifying it as a, as I say, the investigative reporter that you were the camera there anyway. What, what was the, I mean, this, I guess, shows the difference between a professional, I guess, and not. And I don't mean that in the sense of professional and payment. I mean in being prepared to address the story if we treat this as a story. They make a list here in this article. The UN says they took over the building. The UN stated the taxpayer funded Salt Palace was now international territory where U.S. rights don't apply. That's the point of my whole focus was right there. But did they take, could they say they took over the building? Sure. If they're an organization or association that's renting or leasing it or been told to show up, there, there could have been an authority behind that they could take over the building, be responsible for the building and have the right of use for a time. That's what leases and rents are. So I wouldn't get, see, I, I don't get too uppity about the fact they took over the building. Going to a ceded territory, that's a whole big deal. That's, that changed it right there for my mind. And so, I mean, some of these things on this list I'm, I'm not even caring about. I don't care they use the word compound. I don't care what's the thing that's going on that's har a harm. If you don't have a harm, forget, stop. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. This story isn't even a story. The UN stated that the United States was outside the doors of the Salt Lake, Salt Lake Palace. That's great. That just confirms a statement you put down a line item that perfects the assertion that they were trying to claim ceded territory. Who cares? Just write it down. That's good. That's what they said. This is a like, notice to everyone else. This is an important point in the facts that you're going to build that they were making the claim that they had a ceded territory. They were making a claim that they intended to violate your rights right there as well, didn't they? That's a confession. I don't even know what more the problem is. It, to me, this isn't the problem. This is actually, go ahead, talk some more, cop. What else are you going to tell me that you're violating? But you have to be aware for that. Okay, so then the, the, now the point, the UN, who at best should have been a guest at Salt, Salt Lake, instead acted like the invader and denied a U.S. citizen their First Amendment rights. Well, that's a big convoluted statement. At best should be a guest. Maybe they were the guest. They were invited by the mayor. See, so our own look at this is pretty perturbed a bit, too, and I like to not do that myself. And then go on instead, acted like an invader. Oh, you don't know that? If you got the first part wrong, maybe your second part wrong. Denied a U.S. citizen their first? Well, United States citizen, that's a funky term. I don't know. We'll go with it a little bit. First Amendment rights. Does a United States citizen have a First Amendment right? Oh, shock for some people. Well, you got to qualify all this. So let's give them the United States citizen and let's give them the First Amendment right that was violated. That's the problem. And so of the list of all that, there's only a couple things that are real focusable, if you will, to get the law, to get the things, to out these people for the crimes they do. Why is that? Because these people from the UN and their, their parasitic amoeba comes at us by adjunct policy that's not law. They'll get you to buy into the lie. And if they get you to buy into the lie, that's your consent. It's that simple. And so I've learned over years now, and analyzing the method and then looking at what it takes at least from my perspective and my limits of my perspective, I've learned to address the points on the subject matter foundation. They want to assert that this is territory. I want to see the session doc, the seating documents to the UN, a non-government no less. That I want to see the authority of the state to do so. I want to see the authority of, to use taxpayer monies to invite them to do that. Now, they may give you a time to do that, but that then you get the name of the officer. Now you start getting, I want their supervisor, too, because I want to make a nice linkage of, of authority back to the actual authority. 
So you're, you're now having a whole different word in your mouth, but standing there stuttering because they're not going to want to, well, you can't take a picture of my face. Well, yes, I can, because I think I now have probable cause to believe your crime, unless you can show me this arm load length of load of stuff. And after a couple of those, I'm almost wondering if you don't have a friend saying, hey, we got a real problem down here. we got somebody asserting uh, international, uh, ceding international territory, I mean, uh, local territory to an international body, and they're committing felonies against our people here. I need the cops down here. I say that really lightly to most of you because you don't know what you're doing. But you figure this out, then you start to do that. Why? Because you want your call in rightly at the right time to make your claim of felony once you have the elements together and you can prove them out. And that's why to put the elements in black and white, don't don't go by your memory. I guess my point is I saw this stuff and I see these are always opportunities and we always fall short. We think we know, we get, uh, we get emotional about some of this and then there's some, and it, it, there's no need for it. And somebody got to get excited because this is your opportunity doing it right to really open that can of whoop ass in ways that nobody understands at this point unless you listen behind the woodshed. And even then you got to do you got to do your research, you got to do some application, you got to see where the limits are and you learn the, you learn that narrow path over doing it. Let me keep going. I've wasted a lot of time on on this. I'm not wasted it because I'm giving you information, but I mean as far as going through the tabs and explaining all this stuff is just there's so much to have to go on. Uh, go on. I mean, this is a, an, actually an opportunity. So I hear a lot of attitude in this. Uh, they're, they're correctly identifying for you that there's a problem. But I hear attitude in it that's not qualified and not qualifiable at this point. Uh, that we can't follow down, but that we can look at it and say, okay, there's a different way to go. And we could be bringing up, empowering ourselves. We could bring ourselves into a better position. We're not a trespasser no more. Now we're the investigative reporter, potential victim of felonies. And on our fundamental rights. So you're protecting that in yourself. But you want to make sure you're doing that. It's defensible against an attack by another bar member. Not another one. A bar member who may want to attack that. You have to go be able to attack them back. And that's why I talked to you about the documents that say that the bar member is going to promote this this type of a, of a violation. In general, I have to guess I say. But So this article keeps going on and says... Uh, Talks about an interesting term, civil society. I notice that's, that term's coming up, the so-called civil society. You're going to see it in lots of places. It's coming up in this article again. Uh, they also provide the following information. The UN is convening the 68th Annual Civil Society Conference in Salt Lake City to further the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, and then the UN wants to, quote, make to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable by 2030. And this is all I've read this all to you before. Uh, they take issue, this article takes issue with you, and rightfully so. And then it points this out, which I, why I won't even talk about this, about what the real danger is and why people read past a, a lot of things was not missed in this article. Uh, and thank you to the art, to the author for this, because the UN Declaration of Human Rights, which is this predicated predicate is the, the prerequisite of all of this sustainability, they point out in one part of that uh, Declaration of Human Rights, which I've told you is not what you think it is if you don't go read it. And they highlight one point, but I wanted to highlight again something that comes up. I've told you these warm and fuzzies happen. You can read 50% of the way through, and it sounds all warm and fuzzy, and everyone's everyone's winning. It's a win, 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 whatever, win. No downside. And you get past 50%, you better start reading real close. And you keep reading up until probably 80 82% of a document and then you'll find you'll find where it's all been destroyed whatever they gave you in the beginning it's destroyed well they find it at the very end near the very end and he quotes to you this and this is very important to understand now, I'm going to go read that document just to show you it happens way earlier to start to give to you the knowledge that the human rights is not something you want and that the that the government the legislators that are giving money to promote this are actually committing treason and if you, but not on your word. You got to go read the words and produce the fact of it. And now what I'm saying here is, when you go back to the one who asserted the the diplomatic immunity, almost the violation, the territorial claim, and there's and the state legislators are paying, and the agent is the local change agent, is the mayor. You've got this lineage of treason going on. See, you do, not by your opinion, by the facts of how it works out. But he says right here, he prints out, and thank you to him to do this. 
in the Declaration of Human Rights, go down near the very bottom, right before, I think, Section 30, and we'll get to that here. Rights and freedoms, it states, rights and freedoms may in no case be exercised contrary to the purposes and principles of the United Nations. As I've always told you, these things come in and they look good, but they're subject to the power that authors them. And for those of us in the United States, we look at this, what's the purpose of the United Nations? What's the principles of the United Nations? Includes all nations, cannot, by definition, cannot be something agreeable by those of us in the United States of America because of our property. Because this thing that, that's been created does not recognize private property. It's all held by what Heinrich came called a government, by those that wield the, the direction, directives. And so listen, Carol, I'll read it again because it's very important. Rights and freedoms may in no case be exercised contrary to the purposes and principles of the United Nations. Uh, maybe you should just compare the United Purposes of the United Nations with the United States, and maybe you'll start to see a little bit of a hint there. Then they go on to talk about some other things, some quotes, and this and that, to, to get you understanding. There's a problem here, a big problem, and lots of people that sent me this link, uh, you're, you know it, you know I talk about it. Thank you very much for all doing that. You, kept, you know, it's a heads up to me. I had heard about, not this article, but the video that comes to this. Now, let me move on. From my summary adjustment on adjustment on maybe how I would how I would look at this a little different. There's more to say about how someone coming to me it looks like a police officer in a costume that wants to claim sovereignty over a seated over a territory United, uh, or a land of the United States within a state, no less. That's a secondary problem. I'm gonna, my mind moves quickly to a whole other level immediately into international law. And what did I tell you? My whole starting, once I got the rose-colored glasses slapped from my face decades and decades ago, was where did I tell you I found myself standing in a law library in a university? Where did I, what, what books did I, did, what, what, what vo, um, encyclopedia of books was I standing in front of? And I started this journey this way. Was Benedict's on Admiralty. Don't freak out on the Admiralty, folks. Just, it's international law, okay? That tells you something as well. Stop freaking out on all these terms. Look at what they are. Start to observe. I'm standing in front of Benedict's on Admiralty, and I, folks, I literally read three quarters of that encyclopedia. And apparently I haven't needed any more because been, it served me very well. And somehow I retained it. The shock to me was so great that it was like I was a, literally a sponge. Can I recite it to you? No. I can just tell you there's principles that just stuck with me that... that Work all the way till today. I don't ask you to go do that. You'll, you'll, you'll see a whole lot if you do. But what I'm saying is that we started, I started this thing in international law. This is the main attack of the United States at this point that I can see with all the change agents that come in. And I'm sitting here for the last at least 10 years broadcasting to you exactly about the interference from an international threat that's invaded, but not like it says in the last article. The invaders have been invited. They're like Dracula. But they're going, they were invited from inside. You've got traitors inside that are doing this. Now, you can't go, like, attack these people. Well, you, know, you, know, you can't attack these people. But, but there has a method, and you've got to address that. And it's not so simple, it's not so straightforward, but it's addressable pretty quickly once you see it. Now, let me, so let me move from, like, a bit of a criticism on the response between the costumed one and the, and the, the investigative reporter that I think kind of fell short a bit certainly didn't get advantage and opportunity out of the encounter that could have. I hope you appreciate how far this thing blows. What kind of a popcorn kernel explodes on them when you do this a little better? And you're sitting in a position, you're never really asserting that they're doing it. You're taking their claims and saying you're not proving it out completely, and you need to, to do that. You need to do this, this, and this. And when they fail, they agree they're a problem. And then you attach that failure on someone else's aiding and abetting it. And so we start beating it down a different way, and yeah, it takes a lot more work, but when they're in the gates and you got to go hand-to-hand -hand with them, the battle's a little bit different than when you're a sniper, okay? And so this is kind of how I look at this stuff. I'm not, a, I'm not a military guy, so I don't know, but I just tell you it's a little bit different. You treat a distant target different than you do hand-to-hand, -hand, don't you? And now they're in the Dracula's in your house. How do you get rid of Dracula? It's immortal, folks. How do you get rid of that? Think about this stuff. And so it starts to really humble you on what you might do 
uh, and it could be overwhelming, and you could go in a fetal position and shut up, but it, it's defeatable, folks. It's not immortal. It just wants you to believe it is. And so going over here now, let's go to the video and listen. I hope I have the levels right, and I hope it plays out. Uh, they Here's the important thing that hit me. Not that it was a, com except for the violation of the press, not the compound, not the international terror, none of that really, because if that didn't cause a harm, who cares? But it did cause a harm in someone who, who was trying to claim it, however correctly that they re responded, and however insufficient, by however insufficiency. Then this video that I know will play here explains the connection, how the the metastasization connects to your society across the United uh, United States. It's already in the infrastructure and capacity is already in your nation. So to get fired up because they call this thing a uh, an international territory, you're missing the point. All right? And this is what we fought and in, in ex exposed in 2013, not because we called it out, because it aids and abets what we called out. And so let me play this little bit. It's not about the woman in the in, in the in the video about her rights and, the, and not taking pictures in the in the costumed one. Listen to the connection already existing in Salt Lake City, through which the invitation happened, and a, we'll start. We'll and then we'll come back. It'll be about 30 seconds here, 40 seconds. You listen where it connects to you. In it's not just it's not just in Utah is the important point. This is throughout the nation. This could have been anywhere connected to one one institution. And here we go. Listen for it right at the end. The evidence is clear that the United Nations claims of defending human rights is a complete farce. They have demonstrated their intent to rule along with their complete lack of respect for our own citizens for all to see right here on our own soil. That's not all. But this has all been brought to you by your fellow elected leaders and other prominent Utah officials. The Utah legislature actually paid for them to come here and defended this international compound with your tax dollars. The mayor of Salt Lake City welcomed them with open arms, and the executives of Utah Valley University invited them here shortly after they officially signed up to promote the UN's agenda through the university. There. You're at the end? Through where? Through the university. What have I talked about the university system? What have I talked about the National Consensus Policy Institute? What have I talked about alternative dispute resolution? The secret was in that part right there for those of you that want to take things on instead of just railing about a petition against the, the, the UN that may have a right, been invited here and had a right to be there. Now, it may have been excessive that they claim sovereignty. I don't know. That If that question is denounced, you won't even have an argument anymore if they do that. Oh, it was just a mistake. They win. But to go through, like I've suggested, and tie all the problems to something more substantial, using that first claim as a colorable imposition that allows the fostering and the courage or the cover for a crime, a bigger crime, not a misdemeanor crime and not a civil trespass, but felony crimes under the laws of the United States. That's the treason. You violate those laws of the United States. That's treason. Sedition may be one step down, but maybe not so far away. Little different elements, but real close. You build those elements in what you're seeing. Through what? It came through the university system. That excited me more than hearing that they were claiming a ter international territory. But one thing is I can't deal with the international territory claim if the person on the other end, behind the camera, isn't going to assert it and develop their case like I'm suggesting and make this an issue. All y'all complaining about it have a power here to go in, and there may be other other avenues. I'm just saying this is one I see came in my mind. I'm telling you, folks, this stuff is in a flash, not flash somebody, a flash. It just comes as an inspiration. Wow, there's a there's a whole bunch of opportunity here, and then my disappointment in realizing likely, likely not 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 that it will, but likely none of you will under, into, uh, appreciate that that way and take advantage. And this is why I say if we get people working in areas about when they hand you this opportunity to beat them about the head and shoulders with it, even if that's all you get to do about it, because there really is a corruption deeper, way deeper than I'm talking about here, you will at least uh, be able to start, you'll be able to begin to uh, give the beast uh, the, the lashings that it deserves and call it out for what it is.
but you have to be dead on. You can't be, I said, as I'm going to tell you, I tell. I said this before, you can't be wrong once. Everything has to be tied to an objective basis and locked in. That's why it's good when they're talking about it, they're giving you that locked in feature. They could come back and say it's a mistake, but if you go through and say they're, even though a mistake it caused a harm, no one's above the law. Now we start to get a better handle on this. What, what will happen? Well, maybe they won't do that next time, and maybe other cities will, and mayors will notice that wasn't right. They won't do that next time. Have you stopped the UN and all its religious adherents? Absolutely not, but you're not going to get these kinds of things happening where they start to assert this stuff in the town, and, and they make it look like they have authority. See, this helps the buy-in later. But where did it go? Let's put it into the context. Where did it go? To the university system. They were the inviters of Dracula into your town. Your your righteous indignation is proper. How you're right? How you're going to respond to that righteous indignation? I think is uh, wanting. I'll just put it that way. I can't say it's all wrong. It's just wanting. And if, if you want to really move this thing along, this is the kind of things that that you're going to. What I'm saying are the kind of things. The way you're going to have to think and approach it. It's a little out. I mean, it's like um, talk about overachiever in a way, but it's not. You're defending your nation against this very important problem because what are they what are they promoting let's go to that I want to point out some things in the universal rights declaration and why I want to do this is so that when you read this thing you can start to get the idea that the magic decoder ring should be in your natural definitions should be working and I don't mean the ones that the uh, Jordan Maxwell might make up or anybody else might make up I mean what's the one the definitions that are used within the authorities and within the jurisdictions not the ones you make up that's a killer on every level. But anyway, going back to this, let me make one word. Where do I see that? Oh, it's in the second, in the preamble. Let me make uh, one one little thing, such as, one example, All right? Unalienable versus inalienable. One starts with UN, interestingly opposed to the UN. One's un and one's in, I-N. We've, I've talked to you about this before without getting real wrapped up and uh, too tight wrapped around the axle. Unalienable you hear written in the Declaration of an Independence, and inalienable you find governments writing, or people writing from government's perspective. Unalienable is antecedent, is in the rights that are inherent in people that have an organized society they build or want to build, and inalienable is those political rights given to you. And that may be good or bad. These are neutral. Don't Please, you got to really get off the emotional roller coaster. This is all neutrality. Look at it without. You're looking at an analysis here. And so listen to the word, and that's just one word. There's a bunch of it. I'll go through a couple of these. When you read the Human Rights Declaration about what the principle that the UN is coming under, that this whole thing is being supported, you'll realize real quickly you can produce the line items that explain that this is a treason against the laws of the United States where you can find them. And I tend to go quickly to the property stuff because that's tangible, right? I mean, a lot of this, I'm a property, you know, I'm a property of my own self. It, it gets as esoteric for people a lot of times. They don't want to, there's no mind for it. So let's go to something a little, a lot more tangible, a lot more objective, if you will, away from you as well. And let me read the very first part of this because they point out the very end, and that's important because it states it right up front, and for a short article, that was okay. What I want you to do is, if you were to have read that, if you, when I referenced it before, and who knows when I did it in the broadcast, you would already be understanding that. You wouldn't be taking it as, oh, I agree with him because he's, he's always been you know, good enough, I do good enough, and he tells us the truth. No, you see it, the black and white in your eyes, you know exactly how. So when this stuff happens to you, no matter where it is, and this extends to all other authorities, then they come against you in their costume, you know these distinctions, and you come out of your mouth comes the better answer, the better, again, the, you know where to go to become the investigative reporter to get them to confess the violation or not be able to prove the assertion. Like I said, where's the document seeding the land that you're throwing me out of under that color? Because if you can't produce it, you're committing a felony. And so now I'm becoming a witness. My camera needs to be staying on to get your face so we know who you are. What's your name? And then you, if you see a badge, you, you call it out. I see your name is spelled that. Is that is that true? Is that your true name? What's your other name? Can I see your identification? And then you start getting the investigative recorder. You become a cop, if you will, without the negative connotation. You're a law enforcer at that point. Without an attitude, you're just trying to do the investigative reporter, but you need the facts, don't you? 
But you come by these authorities so that you're not just some naked trespasser also harassing somebody, correct? You always have that duality going on. Let me read this Declaration of Human Rights so we can see if we can find some stuff right off the top that should tell you, be careful, the principles and purposes of the UN maybe not be so good, but not because they're no good, because when they come to talk to you in your town and you have your whole government supporting it, maybe it's a big treason against you and you have a better than your opinion proof by taking these, the lead of these clues to make your line item statements of the bullet point elements that constitute the crime. Let me read, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a milestone document in the history of human rights drafted by representatives with different legal and cultural backgrounds from all regions of the world. The declaration was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in Paris on December 10th, 1948, a common standard, a, as a common standard of achievements for all peoples and all nations. Sounds real great, doesn't it? Now, you tell me how you're going to con con coagulate this blood clot to actually include the property laws and the property of the United States and its land grants. How are you going to do that? What does culture have to do with all that around the world that's going to be a common standard of achievement? That's the best you're going to do is this common low bar. Shared prosperity, remember, in A20, comes A2030, pops up and says that right there. The, sh the standard of achievement will be your shared prosperity. Now, that's his analysis on this. I'm just saying, if you look very carefully, you find out this is a one standard for the whole world. It means it's one world. I don't care how you get there. I don't care what you call it. I don't care about the emotion. I don't care about all the fantasticals that come out of it. That's what you're looking at when you're comparing it now to one place in the world called the United States of America relative to its property and property laws. We already have a standard. It can't be matched. That's why and also you see some of this stuff. The United States will actually not engage some of these things. When they do engage them and you look very carefully, they make exceptions. But the problem when lately that they you have now the internal ca cancer developed. And they're even getting past Congress when they do this. What are they doing there? They're not going to make a, a constitutional treaty. They just get you to start buying in and practicing this stuff. Where? In your smart SMART cities. And we'll get to that in a second. But preamble, right first, I'm going to go, go to the first, uh, the first uh, sentence in this uh, document. Not hard to read if you look, know where to look at. Preamble, whereas recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. Now, we have a distinction in the term human. It's an evolved ape. It's not the rights of man. And uh, that is determined in, in, in some regard in international law. But it's not your rights as a man or woman. And so we talk as a human family. They're not talking about you. They're talking about your rights, and they're talking only as a member of the of the family with what? Inalienable rights, the rights extended to a human family. You have to ask, by whom? We already heard the answer, by them. Get the glasses on, and you'll see that. That's what we're doing. i got the little glasses going on here. i got my decoder ring going like crazy. So much to say here, just on these statements. The foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. Well, if it's subject to their principles and purposes, which is not freedom, but shared duty and obligation to each other and subject to their purpose and principle, that's not freedom, is it? But it is. See, if you learned what freedom was, as I tell you, it's a range of constraint, a range of motion within a constraint of a frame. Now you see what freedom is. Kind of dumb, isn't it? It's actually natural, but, I mean, it's, they, they use that against you. Uh, justice and peace in the world. By whose standard? When they're making war on you, when they've taken out your property rights and you don't have any, and you're now subject to the, uh, the democracy, the mob, under their guidance, what kind of a peace in the world is that? You've taken away all law. Why are they coming by adjunct policy? They admit to it, the national consensus policy. It's Jefferson Mining District, go to the left-hand side, go down. We have the caution blown out. Caution. This stuff is not constitutional, not statutory, not, not anything lawful. It, we're just making it up and hope you buy into it. And once they get you to do it, you've consented. It just, and then you forget it. Generations, your future generations, they forget but they talk about high-standing things, freedom, justice, and the peace of the world. How can you do that? 
and then to be tra tre treated as some evolved animal where they come and take the idea that they are exalted and you need to be controlled, you animals. So let's, uh, we can go on down. Let me uh, move down. Instead of going to the very end, uh, I want to go and po point out something to you. If you go down, you see all the people have everyone is entitled, everyone entitled, everyone this, everyone that. Uh, the first up to 20 sounds great. And then you get to 21. And I, there's other things in here. I'm just going to go to something that were obvious, the decoder ring stuff. When you're reading for this thing, it just pops out. It, and it, as soon as this violates a principle in the United States, you realize it's a, con it's a law contrary. It's a, it's a policy contrary to law. And remember, the Bar Association will promote this where it can get away with it. Now, Article 21, just two-thirds of the way in, like I told you, folks. You start to get the truth about how it's not so warm and fuzzy. Everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country directly or through freely chosen representatives. You ever heard of de direct democracy here, folks, recently? Is that like what you have in the United States? I hope you've said yes, I've heard about it, and no, it's not like what we have in the United States. Notice also that the word either, it's not directly or either through free, it's through the chosen representatives. As a direct, what? Alternative dispute resolution. <laughs> direct democracy is stated right at 21. So if you thought you were going to get all these entitlements, they're only going to be through the direct democracy. And you see a little bit of that working when you get things like Occupy, where they all stand around and they argue with each other until they all decide it in the direction they want to go. Number three here in this Article 21, the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government. Sounds really rosy about that, but if that shall be the basis of authority, then where's your land laws and your rights to your property? Because this is all subject to the UN, not your local government. And they work on a process where it's not imposed contrary to your laws. It's when you get to accept it because you keep giving up the rights because you keep giving a lower standard to yourself. You keep lowering the bar of yourself instead of holding the high standard, which would be get out of, get out of our country like you, you feel you have to say, but understanding the law underneath it. You understand if you understand the international law and the session and the land law, you'd be at the law of the land. You, they, they, no one can displace that in you. You'd have the knowledge and the power to displace most everybody, not as an arrogance, has the ability to defend yourself from the invasion that they rightfully said was an invasion, except for the legislators giving them money to do what the mayor, the change agent mayor, allowed. That's an invitation, folks. Dracula doesn't do any different. Knocks on your door. Article 29 now. Let's go all the way near the end. Everyone has duties to the community in which alone the free and full development is his personal, personality is possible. Everyone has duties to the community in which alone the free and full development of his personality is deposit, uh, possible. But subject to what? The direct whole, isn't it? The community, the duties to the community. you have any actual rights? Are they talking about unalienable things here? No, they're talking about the privileges given you, which are duties. They end up having extended to obligations. And so Article 29 is the first hint that something's really starting to go wrong here. And let me go to number three here. These rights, now here's right before Article 30, this is where they picked up in the, in the blog cast, the blog uh, article. These rights and freedoms may in no case be exercised contrary to the purpose and principles of the United Nations. That is the definition of inalienable, not unalienable. That is the definition of what we give, we can take away. What you can claim, we can deny. And it's this international body which doesn't recognize the laws of the United States generally. Now, they won't apply them externally. They get you to apply them internally. When you get real smart, huh? Not intelligent, not purposeful and right and righteous, no, and not, and not sitting in your property rights and your power as, as, a, as a people of a, of a supposedly a subservient nation. No, you, you, you throw the, the, the wraps off and give a United Nations authority somehow, the right to dictate to you. Article 30, now nothing in this declaration may be interper interpreted as implying for any state, remember that's the nation, state, group, or person, any right to engage in, the, in any activity or to perform any act 
aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms set forth herein. Implied in this is the freedom of the UN to do all of it. And so when you understand what you're reading there, th th it correlates with number three of Article 29. It says we're going to tell you what is right and what is a freedom, and there's nothing you can do, whether you're a nation or a lowly person with direct democracy, to say anything contrary to it. Nothing. And this leads me up to what I said, it's smart. They do, the method that they apply this is the, the SMART method, S-M-A-R-T. And I found a, a more recent document. There's lots of documents to read. I just happened to find one. I've been, telling, I've been threatening with you with telling you what S-M-A-R-T stands for. I didn't want to just do it out of my, tell, my telling. Uh, here's an article that these people feed from to get their, their ideas that everything they're doing is rosy and that the principles of the UN are good for the United States of America. I don't know about any place else. I know land law, I know property rights, uh, they're absolutely the antithesis of the Republican form representative government where property is, is uh, sacred in a way and supposed to be protected. And the fact that we don't see that and we see the excuses shows you how far away we are from the or origins of where this place is supposed to be. And when we get that far away, it's really no problem that, to see what happens in Salt Lake City. I've seen this so often, it wasn't even a surprise that the, the mayor did what they did and the state legislators have done what they did. That's what we sued That's what we sued in 2013, identifying that it happens. This is the point. The method of implementation is what we sued, right? So that was part of the fostering and encourage that whole thing. And it has a basis from which it operates. And I'll read from what I'll call the guru paper that making it's a 20, I think it's 2017 or so. Remember, they talked about sustainable uh, in, a, in a prior, prior discussion, prior, the prior notice uh, tab that I was reading. Uh, let's see. Not, however, the concept of sustainability in itself can prove ambiguous. Now, let me interject. That is how they keep it. They make it ambiguous so you don't know where the lines are. And that's why I say bring the objective basis. You have to bring that. That's the antidote. You create it, you show it's ambiguous, that destroys it, even administratively or in law, it destroys it. Anyway, keep moving, sustainability. That's why we, the distinction is important in, let's say, in land law, uh, disposal for timber. In the law, they say sustained yield. What people impose on that is sustainability. They're not the same, and they don't mean the same. But because everybody wants to make this, they think they can move these words around, they don't understand the power of staying in the sustained yield versus sustainability. Sustainability is this thing that's ambiguous, that's controlled by principles foreign to you, even if it's coming out of your own, say, your own state. What we, again, this is all focused on, the, again, it starts focusing on what we pointed out in 2013 in our lawsuit. Your, your state legislators are doing it through the Bar Association's arm of the law schools to write all the bills to put together... Uh, the infrastructure has been going on for decades, so it's not just happening today, and built this whole possibility up against you, and you were asleep at the switch. Uh, you're still asleep, but you're crickets, actually. Now, however, the concept, again, remember we said it's a concept. He's at, you read this, the consistency with which they speak is stunning, too. They know exactly what they're doing here. Like, like I said, every time you see these people and they're 100% correct, that's a plan. That's not a mistake. I don't know if anybody can be that perfect. However, the concept of sustainability is in itself ambiguous. Well, it's a concept, right? Okay, it's a continually used and often imprecisely. We risk emptying it of content. That's a critical clue. It's another way we attack it, actually. And I, I'm just reading from here. I don't know. I haven't read this to think about how we apply, but that's my mind starts to apply my apply what we do to this stuff I read because it's information I'm getting in real time as I'm telling you, as I'm thinking. Uh, my other mind is thinking about this stuff. You, you, you empty it of content, folks. You show that it's spacious what they bring up. You, you show that there's a better objective basis. The alternative is the law, if you will, not this, these concepts and ideas. But uh, this is well, let's get okay. Let's move back over. The concept was ad asserting that it was a territory, an international territory. The answer is the antidote. Let me see your session papers. Let me see your title under session law, seating of a land. I'm not, I don't, it has nothing to do with whether I want to, my opinion is whether they're there, these people were there as an invader. I want, if you're making a claim that you have an international territory here, I want to see the law ceding the land to you. 
because I have probable cause to believe that's an impossibility in the black and white in the law. So you assert that, right? I'm not worried about the fact that they're invader. They may be declaring themselves such. I'm going to have to prove it now. I'm not going to say it. They're going to tell me. Uh, there's a proof. There's a proof of evidence that they have to now. They made the assertion, the claim. They have to do it. So you bring the content. You you bring the fact of the that they're vape, vaporous in what they present. Anyway, th this is where the idea of S M A R T comes in and propose and a proposal that takes material form in the magnificent and highly informed contributions of this volume. Boy, I'm touting themselves here. It is an acronym. SMART is an acronym. S-M-A-R-T, like P-A-T-R-I-O-T, patriot. They're not words. They mean other things. You better go find out what they are. They're a clue. You're being done in is what they usually be the clue of because they're so smart in how they do this. They're actually pretty clever how they do this. Who can be against things smart, folks? You'd be stupid, right? That's why I looked at it and I said, well, smart may not be so intelligent. Why? What did I do? I guess in my way, I I take away their ability to say it's to the imposition that they brought this up was to make you feel stupid if you weren't smart. I come in and say, well, it's not intelligent because I've got to neutralize that concept that you're stupid if you're not smart. So I say my answer to that is, well, you might be smart, but you're not too intelligent. And I hope that little twist is enough to counter their idea that if I'm not smart, I'm, I'm stupid, by saying, hey, I'm more intelligent than smart. Because smart isn't what it is. It's not smart as all like an intellect or you, how it feels behind the woodshed with a little bitty slap. Right? I mean, all these words, you, you, you dismiss them. And people want to dismiss the whole thing so I don't have to. This is how they're taking you down. And if you don't have the concept of this, how to flip how, what the intent of using that word as an acronym is, you, you missed a, an opportunity to expose these people. So smart's not too intelligent, but it's smart. It's, it's M-S, S-M-A-R-T. It's not a word. Here's what it is as we go through. It's an acronym that encompasses the elements of an in integral vision of the future based not only on the notion of sustainability itself, but also of mitigation, M, adaption, A, resilience, R, and transformation, T, of societies. When you hear these words, they're, not, they're, they're imp imposing this method. It's all vision, notion, concept, nothing certain. That's why you'll never come out. But what, what are the words? Mitigation of, they create a condition in support of sustainability up front. In this method, they mitigate the harms to sustainability by how they respond and the processes they give that make you think you're doing something like through dispute resolution. Through that process, they adapt how they're doing to go transparent if you catch them. In that, they also build up fortifications in their capacity that they've built by all this stuff to be resilient against future attacks, to be able to transform your way of life, your society, as they call it here. These people are telling you exactly how they do it, whether you understand that or not. When they say SM, these smart cities are sustainable mitigation, adoption, resilient transformation weapons. Coming right out of the paperwork of these people who want to promote, and it's such a good thing. I'm going to say smart, S M A R T. I sh shouldn't even say the word. It's S M A R T. It means these other elements. It, these are paths to sustainability, is the title of this document I'm reading. So when you hear about smart cities, this is not a joke. This is the plan. When you see the embrace of smart cities, they're way ahead of bringing of Utah that way. All you're hearing now is the UN's actually attempting. This is how they're going to do this. They're going to. They're now testing the waters with what they just did. Now I'm pointing out now. How would you respond if I see that the way you responded in Utah? wasn't such a big deal. You write a petition, not such a big deal. They got plenty of infrastructure to handle you. They don't have the capacity to, to defend themselves against 
proper assertions of crime and violations of laws of the United States going against the laws of the United States. By definition, they don't. I mean, to me, that's, I don't know what else to say. Boy, what a soft target this thing is. But it's vast. It's big. You're not going to take it out in a couple punches. In a couple of stabs on the, you know, you're not going to poke a hole in this amoeba, this parasitic amoeba, so he's going to get it to drain out. Remember, it's resilient. It's got backed up defenses inside your society, and I'm saying they've been there for decades. Let me, uh, one more thing I want to point out. Uh, right before the paragraph I read, it says this, which is very important because at the very end of this is very important. It tells you what their focus is. Not without great effort, we have managed to generate an ample consensus in recent years that is now essential for our societies to change direction toward a more sustainable world that we will r give rise to a new economic and social model. There's your news that's been in the news over and over. It's about economy. Economy, as I talked about it even more specific here last few weeks ago, and the social model. They don't care about your ways in the United States or any country. The Bar Association is not going to care about your ways. They're going to work, look for ways to promote the n concept of sustainability, which is a notion. No different than c could be described as climate change and every other thing that they create to promote this the moving forward of this warm and fuzziness subject to UN principles and purposes which you found all your supposed supposed rights are subject to and I say attach the fact that those are contrary to the laws of the United States relative to your property and I say it that way because it's the fastest way to get you to see where other places are not so obvious nebulous if you will Land law is really black and white, literally black and white. And so, okay, so what do we what do we do? Well, if you know that this is the smart method, and and Salt Lake City is going to be a smart town, or maybe already is. That's right. They're probably pretty far along. Actually, you know, they're like a probably like a Berkeley or Seattle. Seattle's and other places. These people are on the cutting edge. These these places are on the cutting edge, and people don't understand what they're dealing with. A couple of people have thought and fought for years, but didn't. As I looked at and analyzed their fighting, uh, they were in like like they were like in a K, in a mosh pit with them. And you you can't fight them that way. You can't get in and fight them hand to hand. You got to come and do this other technology like I'm bringing to you, and that's just one way. Again, hopefully people will come up more because I don't know where this goes as they adapt against you. They got a lot of brains working on it, and so. They keep and they keep changing these ideas and these concepts by new names, and that's why the names are important to keep track of. And but they can't touch your reality, and that's the other thing I I noticed years and years ago. And that's why the black and white became a very very important to y'all. You don't work on your opinions, you don't work on your emotion. You work on the fact they're going after your economic. You, you're going to economically harm you by social behavioral controls that they will get people to believe is a good thing, and you're going to dis. They're going to. The direct democracy is actually working right now against you, and you don't see it is the problem. Because they just get people, the future generations, or we call it dumber and dumber. I don't know that it is. I, I think it's just more less and less unaware of what the past had to offer and more and more accepting of what the candy, if you will, Halloween, uh, such that it is the candy that you get for dressing up in your own costume. Your own personage, right? Your personality is what you protect. Personality is subject. It's the it's what it's what the inalien, inalienable works on. It's within that system as that person that person exists. There's persons all over the place, as I tell you. Just look in the statutes; they'll define this all over the place. But they all have a particular subject matter that are addressed in a certain way. So it's very dangerous to block them all out. I mean, I may not want to be one in general capacity, but in some regard, what does the court talk generically to when you have, have, someone, you have someone with rights? And so there's a, there's a little bit of a fine line as to what, when you can use the term person, the one that were invested with a right, a civil right, if you will, a civil liberty, I guess it's better stated, a granted right, even better. What do you call in neutrality a a code that responds to protect those in neutrality is a little different problem. 
In, to that extent, I don't necessarily have a problem with the word person. What has been done to it is is now the problem. And that's why you want to challenge that condition relative to a subject matter underneath it. The personality that is invested with all these dubious things under UN, well, it's subject to principles and purposes of the UN, which is not even a government, it is really the a different type of person, isn't it? It's just a different type underneath that ruling guidance. And so my point here is you find out that they can't come under the law, you're likely going to find how they're violating it just by knowing where to go ask the first questions. My questions may not have been, my direction may not have been the best one. Some of you might have a better one. I don't know. I don't talk with too many people to know. But my response to that video was, you made a claim for a territorial claim in the United States? I need to see your seed, your seeding documents to the to the land, and because if you don't have it, I think you're using the color of that to, to violate my right, my fundamental right of the press, and some other. I mean, whatever one, and that's a felony in this state. Because here's the point: if you don't have the session documents, you're subject to local law, aren't you? That's pretty. That's self-evident right there. You don't have to get it. I'm not in argument. I'm just wanting not to get. You just made a claim. I need you to prove it because otherwise I have probable cause to believe you're making a felony. And I, I would have this in my bag of law, my bag of press. In other words, that 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 uh, so-called police officer in that tape would have had to walk up to you with a briefcase. <laughs> and the fact that they weren't trained to do that is also another problem. So it goes on and on, folks. What's available to us? We don't, as a society, we don't take advantage when we see the invasion. It is an invasion, but not the way it's been described. And by dis misdescribing it, we're, m we're not addressing the problem the way we should be. And I'm only talking to you from the, from the violation in the first instance, but also the, the systemic capacity that they have to, uh, to destroy us within the country itself that appears to be lawful. And it only, it's only, again, it's only as a savings clause do anymore. As I've told you in the administrative procedures, they can do an alternative dispute resolution, but they have to resolve valid existing rights and, and properties. They, they have to do that. It's written as a savings clause. That's how short we are from losing this. It's five or so words in, in an, an administrative uh, statute. They'll say thousands and thousands of words about their right to how they're going to do this, the only thing that saves you from them is this five or so six-word savings clause, is how close we're to, to losing all this, how close we are to being subject to the principles uh, and the purposes of the UN, and we are right now because the people that run your law in the courts have s pledged to promote this concept, which the guru paper says is a concept. If you miss the importance of how low bar this stuff is, you don't, you may be not worthy of the place you live or the property you think or the ideas you think you have about about being free and I have a problem then if you again not to denigrate so much but if you think your only answer is to go through a petition we know won't go anywhere and you don't have another thing going that's that's to them that's the win for them that's to your shame in a way if you're gonna to have to have a petition, maybe to to get maybe to get some interest, also have these other things I, I've been mentioning. Have those in play. Don't stand in shock and horror and pass the link around in shock and horror. Take what you heard. I, I I got tons of information just from that short video on what needed to be brought out. The opportunity to make it work was was lost right there. Now, so we can take it as an object lesson, if you will, and you understand what to do. Now, if you learn that. Minus the international concept thing, you have that same approach you can do to local law enforcement or or the politicians. I noticed they kind of said you're they kind of blended everybody with those local politicians like you're one too. I noticed that comment again. I didn't. I can't. The guy's words are the guy's words, but our fellow politicians. Who's a fellow politician unless you're a politician? So again, again it's a concepting problem here that uh, gets us in the wrong direction. That I'm, I'm, I came today to kind of talk about, kind of, I'm talking about it. I'm hoping it's clear enough that I'm telling you there's a different way to approach this that outs these people. It's focused in the university system on this point, on these things. We've outed it in, 23, in 2013. Uh, it's the method. They give you the name for the method. And it all turns toward presenting internal to the United States, contrary to its laws, and they admit to that. 
to take away your way of life. And I'm just stunned at some level. I'm fascinated at another why no one responds to that. Oh, we'll talk about going to the Second Amendment, but this, this is not going to be solved by going to the Second Amendment. This is not going to be solved by doing pretending to be a press uh, photographer at a UN 2030 convention and not knowing what to say when they start making assertions of, ed, of territorial sovereignty. Boy, that escalated quick, though, didn't it, folks? And why I tell you have to be fluid in what your knowledge is. And I'm going to just say, you're not going to find that for the most part on the Internet. I don't know what else to say about it. I don't know what to tell you more than that. Uh, I go on the Internet, and I hear this stuff, and it's always something that's, yeah, it's cool to know, but it's not a, not applicable. And so let's pull back to the sustainable development. Let's pull it down to the, you see, it's all engaged in every nation, which is a state underneath the principles and purposes of the UN, which is relegated to the UN itself. And who do we have inside the UN as an advisor, an advisor interest, not a nation, not a state, even though it is a state, which should tell you something about its isolation, but the Holy See. The Holy See is in the Vatican. It's the city-state in the Vatican. It has as a religion. It sits as an advisor, uh, an observation, observer in the UN, and it has what? It has protection and guidance from the International Bar Association. And I talked about in 2015, if I have that memory correct, talked all about this stuff coming down when the Pope stepped up and said he was going to promote all this stuff. If you don't think this transcends secular to religion and all this other stuff, folks, these people have been in play for a long, long, long time. And in the United States, they had a lot of work, and I'm astonished. I don't have to put, take my hat off. I don't have a hat I'm wearing right now, but I'd have to take my hat off to them to how well they've snookered y'all. Yeah, me too, but not so much anymore. I just not enough of me fighting someplace and not really fighting, exposing the black and white and the and the principles uh, that are contrary to what their agenda is, the antidote to what they're doing. You, you have to have someone presenting that. Otherwise, these people are going to have their way. That We move into the one world religion concept. Also, in the same week coming out, Pope Francis, or excuse me, in a couple of weeks here, uh, a couple of months, I guess, actually, as this no, it comes through, I found this again as I was looking through this other stuff. Pope Francis signs historic covenant with Islam. I think this actually happened in February. Right underneath our nose, I talked about it in 2015. Remember, the schism was going to be healed up too with the Protestants, right? So this has all been working under the skin. They're making and healing this up. You think this is different than the UN thinks? The principles and purposes that I've been talking about, you're missing. A, you're missing one or more trick. This all comes together. Pope Francis and Islam are both steeped in sustainable development, uh, aka technocracy, as uh, this author envisions it. I don't get lost in all that. Technocracy is another tool. It's a part of how they're implementing this thing. Smart, I guess you could put T at the end of that. Transformation, it could be technocracy. You can actually transpose these words and mean uh, it wouldn't change much. The Pope's chosen papal name, I don't go all through that. Just know, the covenant with Islam and, and Catholicism was done a few months ago, February, well, quite a few months ago. Time flies. The buzzing we hear, I suppose. I don't I don't know what more to say. That's the story. That's it. You can go through and read the details. But this is all on tap to bring us what? It said it in the beginning of the Human Rights Declaration. Someone's fuzzy, warm and fuzzy ideas of what your duties are going to be to a ruling principle that is not under your control, even though you have direct democracy. Okay, so uh, word of the wise. I mean, I guess one of the things that pick, picked up on here the article that I read from before was from a prophecy update site on the web, on the web blog. And then I noticed this story, which caught my attention to it. The prophecy update, really, really uh, green religion, religion related, religion generally, the melding of religions, the steps being taken that maybe it doesn't hit the mainstream, of the players that support the sustainable destruction Relative, uh, I can't talk about really other places. Relative to what I see is in the United States, a distinction in all of the world, all of humanity. I want to talk about the human family. This is different than what's happened in all of humanity if you think you're just an evolved ape. What happened in the United States? Whether we, whether we enjoy it right now or not, whether you're bold enough to stand up and protect yourself against the, the Genghis Khan everywhere, I don't know. But, but we have it to, to, to gain back 
and it's really not an invasion. They just they never really took it. No different than the assertion of territorial sovereignty. I really like to see that. I really want to see the proof of the cession of that of that compound to the United Nations. That would be a a mind blower. But I don't think I think they lied. So that'd be I'd be all I'm all over that just to prove it. I want to see that. Not because of, I want to see it. I'd like to see, and then I'd want to know how. Why? Because that may be a whole other line of attack. I'd boy, I didn't never think would be possible. But if we may keep making it a question and an, emo, an alarm and an emotion, and don't take the steps to actually have it be something, and this leads my mind to an injunction. Given you can make what I'm telling you, and you show it's aiding and abetting the subdi- sub- sedition of the United States and laws, subversion and laws of the United States, and it becomes like this terrorism, you now have a cause to enjoin it, don't you? And then you have a problem, don't you? Because you're going to go to the same bar member who's going to be sitting as a judge who's going to promote sustainable development. You have to sue them, the bar association and its members. And then you have to argue that they can't be independent. And you have to probably show some reasons why some court cases in the past have been suspect, highly suspect, if there was property rights, which builds their problem a little bit higher. But I'm just re-describing to you what we did in 2013. One of the parties was the Bar Association. Two of the two other parties were the Democratic and the Republican Party. So we got we got the we got the players, the legislators, and the ones who make a decision, don't we? Impliedly, we sued what the either it is aiders and abettors, which are the administrators, which is the administration administrative branch, which includes what it includes all the this universities, doesn't it? And an injunctive power is such that you can continue, the injunction holds against all the agents and aiders and abettors and fosters and encouragers of the method that you stopped or you, you, the harm that was being caused. So I've just again n- nutshelled the whole of the reasoning why you run you run this way and included another remedy on top of what I was talking about what could happen in the front end of this problem with uh, Utah. So the again Pope Francis and uh, Grand Imam of Al Azhar. Ahmad al Tayeb prepared a, much with a reflection and prayer about their union now, back already done in February, entities that ab- agree with the destruction, the warm and fuzzy destruction of your way of life in the United States. And, and I'll say it extends, those of you that have rights underneath the rule of law, those nations are that way because they're also underlying foundations of what I talk about that aren't necessarily uh, enjoyed but can be invoked in other countries in different ways. Now, how is technocracy we talked about? There's a technocracy website was where I got that uh, one world religion uh, coagulate, blood clot coagulation uh, in the world that we live in. And uh, a couple times I've read some comments and, and kind of missed this little story, but it came up again, so I'm going to throw it in there. How are they going to keep track of all this and this technocracy and all this technology? Uh, we hear the 5G and all that, but there's this layer above. It's in the satellites. And now the story comes up to remind me, to remind you, and you, some of you already know this, you comment about that as well. Uh, I think the last two weeks, three weeks ago, when I didn't mention, even though it sits there to mention so much to say, the SpaceX Starship is a very big deal. Uh, interesting discussion in the Cassie Hadmer web press, WordPress. So uh, it talks about this from an economic corporate viewpoint driven by Elon Musk moving through the sectors of society that make a lot of money, like energy and communication, and there was another one. This is an interesting article to read about what may be driving Elon Musk as he's trying to get up to Mars and how he's going to fund it. One of the ways they're going to fund it is in communication with this uh, this SpaceX Starship, these satellite systems that are up uh, for communication purposes. In advancing a destruction of your way of life, well, he tries to make one for himself, or not really himself. But he's going to try and go in after the philanthropy of putting the life on Mars, if it's not already there, but well, at least one we can recognize. It, it It's kind of an interesting read because it kind of shows that the destructive path that's left for you is not one that he's on, and he may be oblivious to, like I've talked to you about. I don't like what he's been doing relative to some of his projects because it looks like he's not too con- not too interested in protecting people's prop- property rights. And that's an indicative of someone who believes in the sustainability. And you'll hear a lot of that talk. In fact, I think he's changed his name to Tree Lawn or something. He wants to be this uh, known for planting trees. 
well, I'd rather have him learn more about how you do wa watershed management, and we need to cut some trees before we can replant some trees and stop planting trees where they don't normally grow and try to force nature under the color of doing, uh, doing nature some, uh, some help. It, but it's all a concept, remember, a notion. It's not based in any actual science. That's another thing. But, uh, and we found out with the, with the probe. There was no science behind what they were doing. They just talked talk like it is. So we have SpaceX. Uh, gonna, he's using this to actually fund his, 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 his desires. And one level, I agree with Elon Musk. We needed someone like him back in the 70s just shoving a lot of these cool ideas on. Uh, but he's too tainted by the sustainable view as well. So we have a problem now. Uh, but he, he looked at as an economic corporate profit function is a different analysis that I looked reading through a bit of this in the wake of Elon Musk's aspirations, good as they might be, there's going to be a whole lot of destruction. And a lot of that will happen because you are not stepping up and to stop some of it where it can be stopped. And if I talk go back to 5G and how they're going to get the Internet of Things to work. I've told you how to go about doing that. That's simple administrative stuff. I've told you the failures of the current condition. I've told you what they rely on, how to at least attack those. I don't get many people stepping up. And so this, you know, the Utah thing is just a, I just shrugged my shoulders. You had a big opportunity. You still have lots of opportunity. They're all out there. But there's no there's no actual picking up the responsibility in the right way and, and executing on it and actually making it something that would, um, well, I, I think it would destroy a lot of that. It certainly would put a big pock mark in the, in the middle of the nation, uh, Utah. You put a big black hole right there for this stuff. Wow, pretty cool. Anyway, going on. So we got a, satellites are going to, just from a profit motive, there's going to be a destructive 5G implementation through satellites. They don't need your antennas somehow, uh, except for, you know, maybe getting you off the street. And it's really about those cars, I think, because they've got your Internet of Things inside your house, in your nest. They got inside your nest. They even told you they were coming into your nest. They got all the surveillance they want. They got the, all the machines are all communicating, and because they all communicate, they also can tell where you are in the room, and pretty soon they'll identify you by what? By all these things that they got, the impulses that they can, they can put on you to find out who you are, and then we also, I didn't touch it last week, I added it to the broadcaster. there's technology patented, they can manipulate you with all this, we already know that, but there's, I just wanted to remind us about that. I wanted to remind us that we can be manipulated, but remember where the military, I'm getting to that story in a bit, the military is going to be reading your health. Yeah, all that's going to be tied to what? Well, up through these satellites as well. So that's one more layer of defense or, and or implementation. Resilience in their system is probably an R position. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? To do what? To next transform R to T, transform the society, right? And to what? China is becoming a blockchain powered you Orwellian dystopia. Uh, lots of people send me this link. Thank you very much for the heads up. Uh, this was on my tabs. I'm going to talk about it. I don't only talk about it. I think you sent it to me to say, well, I was I was telling you this is what, this is on the this is in the future. It's here today. As I told you, I can't even talk about this stuff fast enough anymore. It's happening in real time. You understand how integrated, how small the world is. A small world after all. I mean, this this is that small. It's going to be aided by an Elon Musk creating this satellite network as he wants to go to Mars. I don't know why, but anyway. It's an ambition. I guess people like to climb mountains too. I guess there was a time in my life I wanted, I did, I did so myself, but it just cuz. But, but anyway, so in the wake of destruction, it'd be you, and in the process of building all that, it builds the the capacity to take on and, and implement this weapon of destruction. We know it's technocracy. Uh, people will call it an end, end and a means all by itself. I, uh, I don't believe so. I think it's just the, the part and parcel, which now becomes this report. I've told you what's coming. It's now being spoken. You don't have to, there's nothing more to worry about. You say it's China over there, and I pointed to you tons and tons of time. No, you got the same system already in the United States. They just call it by different things. All they're waiting for is the hooking up of all this Internet of Things. China's becoming a blockchain powered or willing to stop you. What did I tell you? Whoever owns the blockchain rules your life if you're in that. There's so much to, that confirms what I've been telling you here. Again, I, I don't know. I feel a little bit embarrassed to go through it. See, I told you so. See, I told you so. I told you so, folks. It's only because it's written. All you got to do is read these documents. Put two and two together. You want to have a critical mind? This is how you do it. There's more, too. I don't even get to half of what I think, and I don't even get to half of what I see, and I don't even get to the stuff I don't see, right? Because this is how much there is around us, how far down the, the cesshole we are. We got a lot of stinky digging to do. No one wants to do it. I get that. 
but this means your future in a real way. China seems to be all going all in. This is the thing I did. You laugh? I hope. Did you laugh? China seems to be going all in. Are you kidding me? I predicted they are all in. They've been handed the keys to the kingdom. Years ago, I've talked about this. Okay, I didn't want to do. I, I told you so. This is so serious, folks. I don't want to say I told you so. This is real. This is not adjunct. This is the plan. This is coming out of a place they told us it was going to come out of. If you were reading, you could read the read between the lines and see what's going on. Wouldn't have seemed like it from the West perspective, but I could I can see it. Anybody who who looks at this stuff can see it. It's not a seems. Everybody's so hesitant to see the the monstrous truth, the beast coming out in in their face. It's it's fascinating to me. But here it is. Blockchain technology is the state machinery, and the world probably shouldn't ignore the possible ramifications. No, you cannot, you shall not ignore, and it will have ramifications, and serious ones if you just go back to the what I've been telling you. Where do you think China's going to re reside in when it goes to those principles and purposes? Where everybody has already been set up to have a duty to the community, the global community, that no state, meaning nation, has an authority to discuss. All right. So uh, the writing is on the wall. If I needed it, there's been a, <laughs> there's been an architect of all this. Uh, there's uh, some graffiti artist been writing right after him, and all you got to do is walk down the street and see this stuff. It, uh, and anyway, thank you for all the people who sent me this link. It was, um, in a way, it's a bit of shock to me because, why? Because it's, it's coming true. It's, it's 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 an unbelievable thing actually coming onto the world from exactly where it would have, uh, you would plan that it would be where uh, where it should be when you understand how people who move nations do it. In other words, let me get it down. Where in the United States do they go to do these what I call the pioneer police state policies? They go to places like Oregon or Massachusetts. Why? Because there's just enough population there that's big enough to be a good test, you want a scientific test, that has a good population for the test, and one where the policies would be ex grow, can be grown and not have much change when they grow to do the effect so they can test it out. You're in a lab, you rats, and that's how they do it. So China has the biggest manageable policies with the infrastructure already built in with their type of government to be able to implement everything they do and factor it out so that they then take that, remember, they take it and then mitigate that imposition, the smart thing, mitigate that imposition wherever you live by adopting in, having it adopted in like the mayor change agent in Salt Lake City through the legislature looters in Salt Lake City to sneak it in and have it agreeable to everybody and everyone's clueless on how to stop any of it. Nobody stepped up immediately to do find out what the facts were and see whether or not there was an injunctive power and then to move that forward. Nobody. And so we got a seriousness here. China is, this is all done in question to me. It's, I had to almost laugh. Yes, it's a, it's a link explaining the blockchain connection to control your life. All the rest, yeah, they're going to be, they'll be Wild West, but all of those rest will be outlaw blockchains. But the one that's going to be important is going to be controlled by the people in power, the real power that can hurt you, the one with the real militaries eventually. And everything that we've been talking behind the woodshed and places you might hear elsewhere about this control grid, this, this structuring, this surveillance, all this stuff. It's all built in. We all complain about this 911. That's why it came in, folks. So I said they went and done it to execute this stuff. I said that in 2001, folks. In other words, I was studying this before that time. And so I hear these stories, and look how far behind. You got it. Yes, quit making it a question, though. You're an enemy combatant to this system. This all-pervasive system that's going to be having communication lines all the way up into the space. It's like I said last, what, last week or so, there's no place to run, no place to hide. And yet we have, and that's all because we don't have to run and hide, but we're also, to do that, we have to stand up for ourselves the proper way, as I'm trying, I tried to lead into the broadcast relative to the video of Utah.
because it's coming soon, you're going to hear this. You don't have any rights. The same week, again, all these stories come together. CPB agents interrogate U.S. citizen and seize his phone after Venezuela's solidarity trip. The underlying part of this story is that there's a war, if you will, a war on journalism. What's interesting about that is I just saw another link that says the police state war on journalism. It made no sense. That's not congruent. It's not a police state war. Police states don't make war. They just keep they keep, they keep the policies of the police state. The war state is a military operation. So there's a war on journalism. It's not the police state. And so the state is a military organization going against what? The lines of intelligence and communication of the enemy. You, through its journalism. This is not even hard. But here we have it. You don't have any rights. CPB, CBP agents interrogate U.S. citizen. Well, the question on this is, this is a maybe someone with a permanent green card. I don't know. Maybe he has a uh, maybe he has something else, uh, but it says U.S. citizen. So you see right away, you think that you're saying U.S. citizen like that gives you any power. That actually in that story might be some, a journalist not understanding what he should be writing. The real status of that uh, that journalist should have been stated right here. The detention of a U.S. citizen returning from Venezuela was an apparent extension of the U.S. government's effort to punish citizens who have protested its policy of regime change and economic warfare. Remember, the UN is imposing economic changes, transformations, on, and social behavioral things. Uh, this is now pointing out the economic thing that the United States does against Venezuela. The attack is on journalists that are the line of communication in this war, not of the police state, of the military that's against you. Max Blumenthal makes this report. Max Blumenthal now gets attacked. This was the story about someone crossing the border. They claim, the CBP agents, they claim the citizen, ha and we'll just use the term U.S. citizen. I don't really know. I'd have to see the status. You, have no, you don't have any rights. Is that true, folks? We read a court case that that's not actually true, is it? And so if people were more educated in the black and white, as I'm saying, these few court cases even give you a different word in your mouth about how you would address this. No different than the lady going into the compound, uh, the foreign territory of the UN, and being told to leave. The, it's not true. Now, they're going to impose upon anybody when they say you have no rights. They're going to impose that. They're going to steal stuff from you. They're going to take away your rights. What they end up doing is they get put the pressure on you till you capitulate and buy into what they're selling you. And you don't stand up for yourself. Why? Because they also have you in a degraded situation, unprepared, unknowledgeable, unprepared, and want to go home. And they know that. And you don't gird thy loins, if I can say in this war, and understand that's what you're going to be against. The fact that you're against it, you shouldn't have to, but that you are, should tell you something. And we get back to all the same problems in this journalist, as you think, has the knowledge, has all this stuff on their phones and all this other stuff available, instead of not having any of it. And doesn't push back against this assertion that the government's claiming you have no rights. Notwithstanding that court case. Now, why didn't he just state, yes, sure, I have them, and now you've just committed a felony? Now, at the federal side, they're going to say it's a port you may not have been able to get. You may have to go to the Title uh, 42, USC 19, uh, 241 and 242. I, I don't know. And once you destroy there, then you go into states' rights, because to get a federal employee, you have to get the states' rights as well. So then you, then you state the states' rights violation. Do you know that? Do you know that to get a federal officer official in state law, you have to show the federal, the state violation? And it has to be clearly established, not a question. And if you don't know that, you didn't listen to one of the broadcasts where I explained that to you, how I went after a district ranger of the Forest Service on something, or your, your ingress and egress, that granted highway that nobody has the power to touch, right? Remember, I went through all that. So, this is not that hard. Our ignorance is really problematic here. You don't have any rights from the CBP. You know, from my standpoint, if I had the time and I wanted to, and I was focused on that because I did some travel, that right there would give me enough to make an engagement with the uh, Homeland Security and do all the things, expose all the things of their rights and their not their rights relative to what I've said in past broadcasts. That's This story right here gives every every one of you the ability to start asking questions to qualify that statement. 
And finally, if you have a focus on where you're going to finally show they're not supposed to be doing that to you, and you take that letter that they're not supposed to do that to you, you stick it in your pocket. Have copies. And if for those of you that went into the video that I've brought, uh, put out, um, gave you last week, I think it was, relative to looking at the in the state, I think I did that. I hope I did. I don't remember. You go check it out. I think it's an old Jerry Day interview with uh, some a woman out of California. She tells you that she went through a very similar process. Some things I may not have done the way she did, but she went through her process. And she got the communications that says they don't. This ultimately says that they do not have the authority that they've been wielding. So you have to set up a plan to go. That's your object in your mission, and it's not mission accomplished until you get your letter. They're not going to give you a letter saying you have rights. You're going to find it out that they don't have an authority. And then you have to turn around and do what I've been saying. When they're giving them notice that they don't have the authority, and they continue. Now they're in felony. So you don't have any rights. In this international specter, you have no rights. In the Internet of Things, they've got in many ways to surveil you and ways to get at you. This is not unknown. You, this is the thing about China. They're telling you that there's not going to be a place really to hide. We did it last week. Didn't I do it last week? You have no place to run, no place to hide. So you're you're naked to that. How do you? Why do you have to hide? I guess is the point. Now we we look at well, were you supposed to intrude? And part of that is again our consent by using some of this technology. And we heard that the whole world's involved in this in this man, military maneuver. Whatever the individual interests of the states are, they're using this UN as a cover as well. And remember, these are, as I look at it, I don't know about socialism and communism all. These are all impositions upon laws that, in, if you want to use human terms, have never been done in the United States that are infringed, that are adulterated, are destroyed. They're actually destroyed. They come in underneath your perception of, infr of infringement or adulteration or even your emotion that, that ha it can't be, but you have nothing else besides your horror that it's actually being violated. You've heard somewhere where they can't claim land, and so you think that's, you know, they're, they're claiming territory, and so that's the end-all, be-all. That's just the beginning. That's just their declaration that you now have to investigate because they'll come back and say, they were, oh, we were mistaken. Then it doesn't mean anything. Their mistake that causes the harm is not an excuse. It's not excusable. They still have to answer for something. But that won't happen because you just don't say more than, oh, you're not supposed to, or get on a petition. Again, remember, administrative law, you say the same thing on cards. You put them in 3,000, 10,000, 30,000 cards at five, three by five cards that have the same statement. That's one comment. They don't care about it. And if that one comment does nothing, it's irrelevant. And so same rule applies here. Get on a petition. If it's the wrong petition and or doesn't have any enforcement, which usually petitions don't, you're appealing to this destroyed uh, mentality, this amoral idea, concept, notion. You're, not, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree you'd right to start with. I don't know why people don't see that. So WhatsApp claims that an Israeli tech firm, spyware, targeted human rights activists and jur ju journalists. There's a war against the journalism. It's the independent uh, uh, line of communication to you, if you haven't noticed. So it's in the news. This is not a joke. Uh, anybody that's going to be saying they're a journalist better, better raise their game on how they're going to respond to this. I read. I would read. I read these stories. I read all these, these these kinds of reports and court cases. Okay, what's the game? What do they play? What's the menu, What's the moves they make? Kind of like if anybody played chess, you all, you read how people, gambits that people would uh, would design in order to do tactics. You're, that's what you read, that's what the news, this notice is. They're gambits of the enemy. And you look at that and see, okay, if they're going to go there, I have to have this knowledge over here. If you look, they go in a direction, you don't have knowledge, you've got to go research in the knowledge that counters that. And I don't mean in a frivolous way or just because you can open your mouth and make some noise. It has to be, it has to stand against the, those that will come later to try and protect that like a judge or something. So this is a little bit more, a little more detailed. And I, and I just probably lost 99% of you in mind because it's so busy. It, it, you think it's just so much. And it is if you don't have, if you don't, if you just keep walking away from it. It's, it's instantaneous 
the response once you get this. As I said, when I saw the woman make the assertion that the, te the land was a compound uh, that she didn't have to be under public invitation, my mind went immediately to session. And then the line of proof she was going to have to do, and then what she was going to try, my mind said, okay, she's going to try to avoid that. Then I have to bring the, the, the tithes to her. I've got to put her down. I've got to bind her down with that as a collar. That's immediately what I have to do. It's where, where my mind, mind went. I could care less about the horror that, I, oh, I mean, I can't film in, in the building. I could care less about all that. My mind now shifts. The harm has been done. It's now, how do I get, how do I set up the record for, or create the evidence or get the body of evidence for the elements that I need to prove what I'm going to have to go after to stop this? So there's a war. It's not the police state. You're going to see stories of police state war on, no. This is a military war against your lines of communication, the journalists. When I say it like that, does it make a little more sense why this is going on? If they're the lines of your communication? And that's why they're important to be trustworthy as well. And why I'm a little bit on these guys for not knowing more. You all know are going to cross the border. You're a journalist, international journalist, and you don't protect yourself and have a word in your mouth like I've been suggesting even the lady in Utah done that she didn't really do is one of our failures. That's us, folks. I don't. What do I read on it? The title: WhatsApp claimed that the Israeli tech firm's spyware targeted human rights activists and journalists. You think that's all they target? And who is this Israeli? Who, who is these people? They're on the international sphere of influence and service to a, a global nation states that are underneath the UN. If you go that route, you think they're not using that? You think the UN isn't a big hub, of big spy hub? And in one regard, business is business separate from war and what we do. They're all working behind the scenes to make sustainability a thing. Oh, and the United States of America is a special exception we're going to work a little bit harder on. And they found out back in the 80s that wasn't so hard, and here we are today. So this is not a police state war on journalism. This is a military state war on journalism. Your lines of communication are being attacked. That's what censorship is about in this case. Remember the Smith, Munt, Munt Smith Act, I guess it is, removed all, removed every restriction on on how the intelligence servicing uh, line of communication services will work. So they immediately started coming after your independence. So I keep talking about this military attack and that you don't have the rights you think you have. You're already subject to principles and pur purposes, not the UNs, the ones that never ended in the Civil War in the United States of America. We have a different problem on top of it. And so here's little indication that you have to step up for yourself. And what I saw in this next story was the military comes after you and you swat you. And then you have to have the resolve to attack back in the right way. And it isn't about the property they destroyed. It ends up being about the due process they didn't give you. What I've been telling you, your only real right, it seems, is if you can identify a procedural process or, or a process failure. And so this next story sounds good on the surface, but it's indicative of something you have to pay attention to. And what you have to do when you're moving your case through, looking at the procedures, the notices, the requirements for notice if they are there, and bringing up whether or not those have happened. Now, I want to see the evidence of a document in writing of the session of the land to the, to the, to the UN. They might there be there by invitation. That means they're not an invader, are they? They're Dracula, but they're not an invader. They'll harm you, but they're not an invader. Because you had someone that represents you in order to invite Dracula in. Taxpayers to be held liable, and here is who gets liable too, taxpayers be held liable after SWAT raids innocent family over growing tomatoes. This is an old story. The story came back through, and it said that the taxpayers that had tomatoes growing was fabricated information. Probable cause was destroyed by this sheriff. I think it was a sheriff. And the process of the, of the uh, indictment, uh, the information was wrong, and, and, and because of all that, they were able to they're able to move forward and they're able to get 
remuneration, some, some compensation for a cop making up a bunch of stuff and getting their house swatted. Now, I don't think that's a protection, but that's all we got in this country. And the point is, is that the taxpayer pays for this. No different than the UN gets leveraged funding through the taxpayer by people that make the rules and policies in your governance, because I don't think it's actual lawful government anymore. Don't, you can't, that's an opinion. You'd have to prove it. I'm saying that's how I approach it, and I go find the proof for all that. The, the, tomato, the people that got tomato, uh, the tomato plants raided for pot because they found some tea leaves, literal tea leaves in the, in the compost pile, and then hid evidence, they didn't have the due process probable cause process side correct which is caught what caught these people. It wasn't that the people got swatted, got their property destroyed, got invaded, got their time taken away, their lives destroyed. No, it was that there's only one little thing was the, pr the process was faulty. And so I wanted to say this is a, you got to be careful of this and make sure that you're looking for the processes that are being followed, whether it's administrative or judicial or whatever, whatever the procedures are, get pull them out and look at them very carefully. Because police owe nothing to a man whose home they blew up, says an appeals court. Now, my answer to this was immediately there has to be a takings. The court justifies that it doesn't need to be a takings. It wasn't considered a takings. I look at that and say that's just the promotion of Article 7 in the, of the, by the Bar of, by Association member in the appellate court to not look at any property in someone in the United States, which f promotes sustainable development. Someone, they swatted, this guy was completely innocent. Look, this is that story, the cops came in, blew his house up, blew out the windows, everything, to get someone who had uh, stolen something from his local store and jumped, ran into his house. This guy owns the house, his son was living in the house. The cops blew the doors, the window, everything off this house. And the man who's innocent has no, uh, no compensation going to come to him. It has to, you have to look at that. Of course it's an injustice. What place do you live in that that becomes the norm in a place that's supposed to be uh, property rights are protected? Shows you you don't live in the place you thought. And because of that, you need to start rethinking how you approach things is what I've been trying to advocate. You know, I've, uh, I've been advocating and I hope people are picking it up. Whatever thing you deal with, you have to go look at very narrow places and produce the elements to prove to the contrary of the assertion of a military, of a liar of a lawyer, of someone that comes under color, like a cop, a costume. We all know it's there. Very few of us that I see uh, have the, are prepared and have the tools to combat that correctly. Like I said, uh, more power to the people in Utah. They now see it. There is opportunity there. And it's all over the place, folks. This is just, it's in the university system, I guess is the main thing on that. It's in the university system. It's in the education system of the people that are coming out to go rule you in the future because you're, you're not going to do it yourself. They're the ones that make the policy. They're the ones that make the decision. They're going to be a code enforcer with all that attitude in them. They're coming out of the universities to do all this. They're the only ones educated. You notice that the, the, sta the labor standard requires education from these systems. You have to be indoctrinated to get a job anymore. There's a reason for all of this. And yet no one steps up and all their critical thought, and all their uh, vociferation, and all their things that they uh, want to do about making, you know, the republic or whatever, I, I want my rights, I want to be left alone, you don't protect yourself against these encroachers, these, these are the invaders, but it's secret to you. Petition's not going to stop this. Thank you, Grimmer, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com, appreciate it, everything here, come here and just hook up, uh, it makes it a lot simpler for all the other stuff I've got to get going, and uh, everybody simulcasts Sound mind. Thank you all you over there, the crew over there. Appreciate all that. Jules, thank you for that, uh, what you do there and, uh, and keeping the little bit of voice going out. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs and nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>